Welcome back to Years in Review, the episodic show where I look back on years in history, starting from the year 1 AD to our current year of 2023. This episode mostly focuses on the Praetorian Guard takeover of the Roman Empire, led by the vile Lucius Sejanus. We also briefly touch the start of Christianity. It's time for the years 26 to 30 Anno Domini in history. Let's begin. But first, most of you are not subscribed. Please subscribe so that I can feed my children. But in 26 AD, this is the year that is the start of many bad things to come. It's kind of like the anime crappy filler arc that will lead to an even worse anime filler arc down the line. So to start us off, Pontus Pilate gets appointed as Prefect of Judea. Notably, later down the line, he will conduct the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. Now, only 12 years into his 23-year-long reign, spoiler alert, as Roman Emperor, Tiberius throws in the towel and basically retires and goes to his and lives in his big fancy villa, leaving the running of the empire to his best friend for life and totally not a backstabbing power monger, Lucius Sejanus. Soon after Big T's retirement, Agrippa the Elder, who is Big T's stepdaughter-in-law, her best friend and cousin, Claudia Poultra, is killed after being accused of trying to poison Big T. This is the start of the Sejanus ascension plot to becoming emperor by slowly dwindling the allies of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Now, in 27 AD, the effects of the Praetorian Guard can be seen already throughout the, throughout Rome, as um, this year marks a bunch of disasters happening. So first, a fire breaks out in Rome, burning down like a bunch of districts. Uh, in the same year, an amphitheater just outside of Rome, uh, in the city of Fidani, just a few miles out, um, it collapsed, and the amphitheater and the amphitheater collapsed, killed 20,000 spectators out of the 50,000 that were there. This year also is a huge one for my religious bros out there, with John the Baptist starting his preaching in Jordan. Which is, this is all according to Luke, by the way, the Gospel of Luke. I'm not really, a, I don't know much about the Bible, but um, yeah, this is the year. And this is this also according to that was the the year that Jesus was baptized by John. So that's cool. This is also thought to be the, the year where Christianity is born as a sect of the Jewish faith in Jerusalem. But it won't become popular for many decades down the line after like the all the martyrdom from Jesus. Uh, so I won't go into much detail about the Jesus stuff because I'm not that smart about religious stuff. I don't know the Bible that much and because the dates are all over the place and I'm not really, uh, I'm not very religious so, and I don't want to offend anybody or mess things up. So I'll go only go over the big things. But during this period, Jesus did some preaching about God and all the stuff associated with that. So the feet washing, all the good stuff, all the miracles that he did that happened in this period. So in 28 AD, this is kind of a boring year. And it's the only thing being done was that our boys, the Romans, are back to their barbarian slaughtering ways with wars against the Frisians, aka modern day northern Belgian people. They stopped the fighting though and agreed for a peace treaty, sparing the Frisians. My little conspiracy theory, my little Matt, Matt Smarts, Matt, Matt Brain, tells me that this was probably like maybe a, just like an excuse to, like, as a, as a distraction so that, so that our sneaky little bastard of a Sejanus can like sneak in there and do little plots and stuff while everybody's focused on the war in, in uh, Belgium. So, in 29 AD, this year marks the complete political takeover of Rome by Sejanus with Agrippa the Elder, the widower of the based Chad Doomslayer copycat Germanicus, being exiled from Rome after being accused of being a traitor. AKA, don't mess with Sejanus, he will have you politically assassinated or something. So, her sons, Nero Caesar, not the fire loving one, this is a different one, and Drusus Caesar are imprisoned by Sejanus while their brother, Gaius Caesar, better known to be as the future emperor Caligula, is sent to live with his great-grandmother, Lavilia. Side note, because there are so many repeated names in Roman history, the people themselves and historians prefer to use the nicknames. So Caligula, even though his name, real name is Gaius Caesar, he got his nickname from Germanicus's soldiers on campaign. Calig um, so Caliga was a uh, type of boot worn by Roman soldiers. So Caligula means little boot. While Tiberius and his neglect will screw over most of the Julio Claudians in the future, I'm just glad to see that Emperor Little Boot will get his time on the throne. I'm just a little pissed that he shamelessly stole the name from the best damn dinosaur franchise ever. But enough of that. Let's talk about the year 30 AD. This is the tricky one. On some accounts, Jesus is crucified this year, and a group of the elder and her sons are killed this year. But most accounts say that uh, other accounts and the majority of the, of all these accounts say that both these events happened in 33 AD. So since most sources say 33 AD instead of 30, 
I'll talk about these issues or these topics in the next video. So in other more confirmed news, let's talk about the Kushan Empire. It was founded in 30 AD and encompassed most of modern day Northern India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Uzbekistan. This also marks the year for um, Valinius Paterkolis writing the Roman version of the history of countries. This is known as antiquity. Now let's talk about babies and that little Grim Reaper fellow. So uh, birth time in 27 AD, Harad Agrippa II was born. He would be the last king of Judea. 28 AD marks Ming of Han being born, the future Han Emperor. Now, 30 AD marks the, the birth of future Roman Emperor Nerva. Um, spoiler alert, he will be put on the throne by Praetorian guards very far down the line. And finally, to round us off, we have Pompeia Sabina being born. She is the future second wife of V. Nero. Now, for deaths, let's talk about Marcus Asinius Agrippa. He died in the year 26 AD and was the half-brother of Big T's first son. Died. Um, like really young, really early on. Uh, but but Marcus is an ally of Agrippa the Elder, and he was killed. Um, little known about this death, but it's speculated that it was caused by Sejanus as a part of his ascension plot. Now, Julia the Younger died in the year 29 AD. You guys remember her? She was the girl that was exiled. She was the daughter of Augustus. She was exiled. Like in the first episode, and after 20 years of being exiled to the island of Tremorous, she is she dies. That's being an old person. So, okay, guys, that wraps up the years 26 to 30 AD in history. This, it, it, this episode had loads of schemes about subtle political takeovers done by St. Janice. Now, if you're interested in streams, check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Boatlick. There, I've been streaming a lot of Outlast, um, yeah, Outlast 2 recently. Um, pissing my pants, scared. I'm just scaredy cat. Um, also, if you like funny video game stuff and movies, go to my, my go to the Boatlick channel. Uh, please leave a like and a subscribe because it really helps motivate me to do more of these. See you guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one.